Hey, 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 what is going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. And if you guys have tried to go to my website as of late at rakeandprofit.com, you would have noticed that it's been under maintenance. And uh, whoa, hello, secondary feed. I don't know why YouTube hasn't fixed that issue. Every time you go live on Google Hangouts, if you have your secondary feed open, which I do right now to see the comments, the, the sound will just automatically fly on and, you, and it won't even allow you to mute it. But uh, anyways, YouTube and Google, get on your game. But uh, yeah, my website's been under maintenance and uh, it's been because I've been redesigning it. I uh, redesigned the entire blog and uh, just finishing up the landing page right now and the about me page and uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to definitely be another awesome resource for you guys. I know over the years I haven't really kept up with it. But that is one thing that I want to start to really, uh, you know, add more value to is the actual blog. Because I know some people they 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 prefer to learn via text and they 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 like, they like to read and I, I feel like there's some good advantages to that. So um, the show's going to start in about a minute. It's 10:59 right now a.m. I am uh, on the East Coast coming to you live and direct from Connecticut. So I uh, just want to make sure that the audio is working properly and do a little house cleaning before we start and dive into this show, which is going to be all about the best shoes. To be more specific, the best used men's shoes to sell on eBay in 2016. And what you could expect to learn in this show are the best brands to buy, the types of models, the colors, the sizes of shoes that you could sell for at least $60 or more. So um, we're going to go behind the scenes. I'm going to share with you my screen, which you can already see right now, which is uh, ebay.com. And we've, specific, we've specifically narrowed it down to men's shoes that are used that have sold for at least $60 in the United States. Um, and they've actually sold, as you can see in the green, you can see what they've actually sold for. So if you guys are watching live right now, be sure to uh, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're on uh, a desktop device or uh, an iPad, you're going to be able to see the comment section enabled on, I believe, your right-hand side. It looks like we got fishing and picking in the comment section, asking what time is the show starting. Uh, we live. We live and direct right now. We got Dusty D. What's going on, Dusty? Asking, to anyone who says email marketing doesn't work, it just worked to get me here. Well, there you go. Yeah, email marketing is probably one of the best ways to be able to stay in touch with, you know, your customers, your visitors, your uh, followers, anybody. It's it's a great way. So, uh, Dusty D, glad to know that uh, the email that I just sent out actually worked. Good use goods is in the house. G U G, what's going on? Nice. I would love to up the shoe game. Don't dabble too much in it, but my thrift stores always seem filled with nice shoes. No competition here. So, um, G U G, that's your nickname, man. Uh, we're gonna learn all about shoes today. We're gonna we're gonna go through the sold listing. So, my number one goal for this live show is to get you guys at least at least ten or fifteen new brands, models um, of men's used uh, shoes that you could be on the lookout for when you're at either a thrift store, uh, a garage sale. Yes, you could find shoes at garage sales. Uh, flea markets, um, antique malls, believe it or not, I've, I've seen stuff like that there. I've never purchased anything, but, uh, you'd be surprised this type of stuff you could find there, men's, uh, shoes and clothing. Um, I'm trying to think of other locations, consignment stores. There's a lot of places, retail arbitrage, going to Marshall's TJ Maxx. If you know what to look for, there's definitely money to be made. And I've been selling a crap load of shoes on Amazon FBA as of late. But it uh, looks like we're, we're, we're okay. Let's get this show on the road. It's 11.02. Uh, let me know in the comments, can you hear me okay? Can you see my screen? I just want to make sure that everything is running smooth uh, before we get started. Watch out for knockoffs too, AC Enterprises is saying. That's uh, definitely a good point right there, especially if you're dealing with specific brands. Just to give you guys a little behind the scenes, I'm actually just finishing up a nice fresh pineapple juice from Whole Foods, 100% pineapple juice, organic, straight from the pineapple. And uh, I tell you, if you guys have a Whole Foods in your area, go get a nice juice every once in a while. It's hydrating. It makes you feel good. And uh, it's, it's good. I love it. Pineapples. 
one of my favorite fruits. Anyways, guys, let's dive into uh, this show. Let's see real quick uh, how many people we got watching live. 17 people in the house. 18. Thank you. Thank you. Hit the like button. Show some love. I appreciate it. Uh, Zach Campbell says everything looks nice. All right. Let's dive into this show and uh, start researching some shoes, men's shoes. Again, if you're just coming in, everything I'm going to show you is going to be a men's uh, shoe, which is going to be used and it's going to be selling for at least $60 um, on eBay. Buy it now within the US. Okay. So this is interesting right here. Let's open up this pair of shoes right here. Men's Nike. I don't know how to pronounce that right here. Size 11, $44, seven, seven, uh, you know, that's weird. Let's take a step back. I put it at $60 or more, and then I see something coming up for 44. So that's just, that's really weird. Let me just make sure that this is targeted correctly. Okay. 60 or more sold. Okay. Let's start over. Let's get rid of this one. Um, I only want to mess with shoes that are selling for at least 60 bucks because that's really the price point I'm trying to focus on. Here we go. Uh, Mizuno. Is this used? Sorry guys, we're having a little technical difficulty at first. Let's see. I want to make sure. Okay, pre-owned. Perfect. Uh, pair of Mizuno Men's Wave Prophecy Athletic Running Shoes. And uh, if you guys don't know about the brand Mizuno, it's actually one of my favorite brands when it comes to baseball gloves, leather baseball gloves. And uh, if you've seen my YouTube videos as of late or any periscopes, you would have been you would have known that I've been uh, selling a lot of Mizuno gloves as of late that I had picked up at a Dick's Sporting Goods and uh, Mizuno is definitely an awesome brand um, in terms of shoes I don't know if I've ever sold a pair of Mizuno shoes and I don't know what makes this so special but uh, sold for hundred fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents Mizuno men's wave prophecy athletic running shoes size 14 very interesting uh, when I buy and sell shoes what I usually like to focus on for men's shoes, uh, especially if I'm doing like retail arbitrage, which is buying and selling shoes brand new from stores like Marshalls or TJ Maxx or Ross, is I usually like to focus on sizes that are no less than like size eight. That's just me personally. Um, up to about a 12 or a 13. I feel like 14 is starting to get a little big and I don't feel like the average person has a size 14 foot. But um you know, it's I don't I still don't think it's a bad idea to invest in bigger shoes because just like bigger clothing, right? There's less people. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong about that. There's probably more bigger people than smaller people when it comes to like a Tommy Bahama shirt because you know how America is. Uh, but shoes, I don't know. You know, you you could be one of the few sellers if you had a size 14. But if you're really trying to stick with a shoe, in my opinion, that is like you're going to have a big audience is probably somewhere between eight to 12. I'd be interested to know what you guys think in terms of the sizes you like to focus on for men's uh, shoes. But uh, I'm just looking, I'm just looking over and doing a little research. I don't know much about this shoe. Uh, so let's move on, but just put that in your memory banks for sure. Here's a pair of Christian uh, Louis, Louis Vuitton, I believe. I'm not sure. Lewis Christian, something Lewis Spikes. I don't know. This is super high end. I don't think we're ever going to find that. Here's a pair of Nike Air Jordans uh, for $149. And I don't know much about Jordans when it comes to authenticating them. So if you are going to buy any type of Jordan sneaker, you do want to be careful when it comes to authenticating. If anybody watching right now has experience selling you know, uh, Air Jordans or Jordan sneakers, let us know what are your top things to look for when you're researching um, and trying to authenticate a, uh, a Jordan shoe. I I'd definitely be curious to know what you guys think. Uh, I'm just looking in the comments real quick to make sure everything is running smooth. Hey, what's up, Robert Benares? Good to see you, man. Zach Campbell asks, are online sales your only source of income? I earn income in, in quite a few different ways uh, through publishing uh, books, which is pretty much passive now, uh, through a membership site that I run, through YouTube, through eBay, Amazon, and a few other things. But uh, I do make a majority of my income from online sales. Okay, let's keep looking around and checking out these different brands. Now, here's something that looks interesting. A pair of black crocodile leather loafers. Can't even talk this morning. Um, 
Belvedere. I've heard of this brand before. I don't think I've ever sold this brand before, though. Uh, but I've certainly heard about it before. So this is a uh, crocodile leather, um, which is, I'm assuming, somewhat of a rare uh, material, if I had to guess. I mean, I, it's probably not cheap uh, for someone like me who's a vegan. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but what are you going to do? Um, size 12, so it's definitely a good size, a rare material, a crocodile leather, a Belvedere. So check the pictures out. When it comes to selling shoes, guys, take great pictures. And, and what do I mean by taking great pictures? One, make sure that you take multiple angles of the actual shoe. So as you can see, they've got the kind of the little slanted diagonal angle, which is nice. They've got the front shot. Here's a side shot. There's the back and just a, a bunch of different shots. There's the soles and everything. And um, yeah, I mean, take a bunch of different angles of the shoe. You want to make sure. I've noticed that when selling shoes, you shoes, people are a little bit more picky and uh, you want to give as much detail as possible. So definitely take lots of pictures. That's very, very important. Uh, also, you want to include measurements. So I want to see if this person did. They don't have much of a description. Their description is literally international buyers. Please note, import taxes, duty. Huh. Am I missing the description? Where's the description? They're not even saying anything about it. Um, in very good condition, signs of wear. I mean, I'm not a big fan of this uh, this listing right here. I'm not sure why there's there's no description about it. I guess, I, I mean, they filled out the, the item specifics, which is important. And if you guys are selling on eBay, make sure to fill out the item specifics properly because that's going to help the uh, customers to find you and eBay is going to help push you out in the search engine. So they, they filled out all the um, item specifics, which is important, the weight. But I would like to see some measurements. That's definitely something I would like to see. Uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what measurements do you include when you're selling used shoes on eBay? Okay, so let's actually do some research. Let's take this brand right here, okay, and let's type it in here, and let's do Belvedere Men's Shoes, and now let's get a better idea of what this brand is selling for. That's important, guys. When you're dealing with shoes or clothing or really any item on eBay, all because one brand is selling for, like Belvedere, you saw that that shoe sold for $80, $85. It doesn't mean that every shoe within that brand is going to sell for that much money. Uh, there's different models, sizes, colors, materials, all that stuff. So I'm going to click pre-owned, and I'm going to go buy it now because that's just something that I prefer. And I'm going to do U.S. only just so the, the – the prices are accurate and sold. And let's get a better idea of what this brand is actually selling for. So if you find a Belvedere uh, branded shoe, you can get a better idea of what it's selling for. So there, there's that shoe that we were just looking at. Here's another one. Looks like it took a best offer at 150. Um, I don't know what it's sold for though. Uh, pair right here for 40 bucks, 34 or less. Here's one for 20, 40, 125. That's a beautiful pair right there. Looks like some Oxfords. So you can see that the prices are really all over the place. Um, one thing I've noticed is that the, the nicer the picture, the more it's going for. I mean, take a look at this right here. Uh, Belvedere Cane Exotic Eel Crocodile. Wow, this is a freaky little shoe right here. Uh, but as you can see, some of these shoes are going for some really, really good money. And I'm, I'm by no means a uh, shoe expert at all. I'm really... You know, I'm just a guy who, you know, I, I see something that looks interesting and I look it up and I see what it's selling for and I do the math. That's really it. So if you guys come across any shoe, any shoe, I don't care if it's Belvedere, a Jordan sneaker, um, Allen Edmonds, Johnson and Murphy. These are some other brands. You want to try to find one that's sold, that's similar, similarly sold um, to be able to kind of quote what you think it could go for. You know, if you find this specific model, you want, to, you want to base your selling price off of this specific model. You, you don't want to base your price off of a loafer or something completely different with a different color. And this is just another crazy pair of uh, shoes right here. Um, let's take a look at it. So this is Belvedere, again, sold for $150, sold from uh, California. Only worn a couple times. Belvedere, Florence, tan leather with brown, genuine crocodile, Oxford. So this is an Oxford style sneaker. 
sneaker a shoe it's definitely not a sneaker an oxford style shoe and uh yeah 150 not bad at all so let's get out of this belvedere brand as you can see that brand is definitely bringing in some money but it looks like they're all over the place just like most clothing items or shoes you really got to find that specific model Let's check out the comments section to see what is going on. Looks like we got about 32 people watching live. So wanted to thank everybody for taking some time to watch this live educational video. It's going to be 100% education, guys. That's all it is going to be about, just uh, researching stuff, researching to see what is selling. Uh, King James V16 in the house. I'd like to get it ungated in shoes, but I've only sold around 40 to 50 things on FBA and only have one rating um shoes clothing luggage what else um I believe watches they're all auto approvals right now which means if you apply to them and you answer the questions correctly you could automatically get approved to sell shoes and clothing on amazon fba uh this is this is aside from ebay guys so if you're an ebay seller only what i'm saying is not going to apply to you but if you're trying to sell brand new shoes like from retail stores in the box from you know, TJ uh, Maxx or Marshalls, which is where I go, uh, you're going to have to get approved on Amazon. If you want to send me a message behind the scenes, I've actually created a service. It's 20 bucks. It'll walk you through all the qu questions, all the answers, what you have to do. You'll be approved in minutes. If you're interested, shoot me an email. Uh, my email is stevera88 at yahoo.com. So that's stevera88 at yahoo.com. Hit me up if you're interested, but let's keep moving. See what is selling. Here's some authentic Gucci, Gucci shoes. You guys, I get scared when it comes to selling Gucci or uh, you know Coach shoes or even Jordans, guys. I'm I'm far from an expert when it comes to authenticating anything, even clothing, even clothing. After being in the game for so long, I don't even like to touch a true religion item. I I even get worried with. Sometimes Lacoste, I even get worried with. Um, that's a little easier to tell if it's real or not. But uh, I, I just, you know what? I, I really like to pick and choose my battles. I like to focus on what I'm strong with and what I'm knowledgeable with and, and just focus on that because there's so many shoes to buy out there. There's so many clothing items to buy. I just prefer to stay away from Gucci and Coach and, like I said, Jordans. Um, am I losing money on some of those items by passing them up? Yes. But also, it's... I don't want to get kicked off. I don't want to get kicked off of eBay or Amazon, and I just I choose my my battles caref carefully. So uh, let's keep moving down. I'm gonna avoid some of these higher end ones like Prada and whatnot, uh, Nikes. Check this out. We got a pair of Under Armour uh, tactical boots. This is very interesting right here. Let's check that out. And uh, I mean, take a look at the listing, guys. An incredible job right now. I'm, I'm wondering if this is Under Armour selling it. No, it's not. Maybe it's a wholesaler. I don't know. Uh, but this is a pair of used Under Armour tactical boots. As you can see, I mean, they're in great condition. As the bona fide hustler would say, those are nubs on nubs. As you can see at the bottom, the nubs are like practically brand new. It says gently used, show some wear on the sides, uh, sides of leather. So these are leather tactical Under Armour boots. I've never seen anything like this before uh, with the Under Armour brand. But really nice pair of boots right there. Took a few pictures. The lighting isn't the best, but I mean, it's a decent picture. It's clean. There's no distracting background. And uh, this sold for $79.99 plus $9.99. So imagine, guys, imagine going into a Savers, right? And uh, maybe you're brand new or maybe you've been in the game for a while. And you go over to the shoe rack. You're looking around. You're seeing, you know, a bunch of beat up sneakers, a bunch of beat up Asics, a bunch of beat up whatever, a ton of different shoes. But then all of a sudden you look on the rack and you see this puppy just sitting there. It'd probably be probably sitting on a rack just like this. And you're like, what is that? That's pretty interesting. And you turn it over and bada bing, bada boom, you see the Under Armour logo and it's priced at $9.99. You throw that in your cart, you bring it home, you take some pictures. So you're in it for 10 bucks. You take some pictures, you list it up on eBay and it sells for $79.99 plus shipping. They actually pay for the shipping. So after fees and everything, you're down to about probably 70 bucks. They probably take about 10 bucks in fees. So you're down to 70. They paid for shipping. So you're still at 70 and you take off another 10 for what you paid. That's a $60 profit on something like this guys. And, uh, you know, I mean, look, he only took four pictures. Let's see what his description's looking like. 
nothing special, just a pretty much a template. I mean, he's not even given any specifics, really. Uh, if you do look in under the uh, item specifics, he, he, he put the size at size nine. Hiking trail shoes, um, leather. So, I mean, that's a $60 profit in your pocket, guys, just by being able to notice that brand right there. So, definitely a cool little item right there. Let's keep moving down the line. See, this is interesting right here because I, I don't even know what this is. I have no clue what this is. John Fluvog, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Cor Cordovan Angels Boots. I don't know what that means. If anybody knows anything about this, let me know. Um, you know, one of the things that you have to learn, guys, guys and gals that are watching right now, is you don't have to know every brand, right? You don't have to know that John Fluvog sold for $70 and that it can make you money. But what you need to do when you're out there sourcing is recognize things that look interesting, right? Certain materials, certain colors, certain styles. Get that fine eye for detail. I mean, look at the detail here. It, it just, you could tell, you could tell that this was crafted with, you know, somewhat of high quality. It just looks interesting. And when you find something interesting like this, all you got to do is you pull out your smartphone, bada bing, bada boom, go into your eBay app. If you're, you know, if you're looking at used items and uh, look up the brand. Usually you're going to find the brand inside the shoe somewhere, or sometimes it's even on the bottom of the shoe. Look it up. Try to find a specific model under the sold listings, under used. Try to find a similar size if you can in color, and uh, there you go. But I mean, look at this, $69.99. Uh, put this brand in your memory banks. Again, uh, we're probably going to do some more research. I'm going to copy this, and we're going to look to see if other items within this brand are selling. But uh, $69.99. Take a look at the pictures. I mean, nice leather. I mean, I don't even know what these are. are these considered boots? So again, and not much of a description at all. It looks like uh, they're just filling out the item uh, descriptions. And I guess Cordovan is a color. I didn't know that. Learn something new every single day. So this is the style of this is called ankle boots. Very interesting. So these are some ankle boots, apparently. Uh, again, guys, I still have a ton to learn when it comes to shoes. I Like I said, I'm really just the guy who sees something interesting and I look it up and see what it sells for. But uh, the more you can recognize and learn the different brands, the quicker you're going to get. And, you know, the name of the game is speed, quick. I mean, the more you learn, the faster you're going to get, the quicker you're going to be able to move through these thrift stores and these auctions if you go or flea markets or garage sales. And I mean, imagine if you were able to process information two to three times faster, you'd be able to go to two to three times more thrift stores. You'd be able to get lucky two to three times more. And again, that's the name of the game, the speed. Speed brings on the opportunity and uh, you know, going out and taking action is going to get you lucky. So uh, let's do a little more research with this brand right here. Whoa, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Let me go back and uh, copy that brand name again and see what else we can learn about this. Okay, here we go. Why does it keep doing that? It's really weird. Okay, we're going to delete that out. Man, this thing is a freaking mess. Copy, copy, okay, copy. That's only one word that I copied and then I paste it. There we go. Cool. Let's have a heart attack. All right, let's see. So let's go under pre owned men's shoes. And what I'm doing is I'm just double checking to make sure that this is a profitable brand because all because one item sells for good money doesn't mean they all do. But let's check out what's going on in this brand. John Fluvog, I guarantee I'm pronouncing that wrong, but you want to know what? Love me or hate me. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, check this out. There's that $70 pair. Here's another $49 pair, $49, $140, $175, $44. I mean, this is a moneymaker right here, guys. Look at this. I mean, this, wow, this is really, really cool. These things are going for good money. Well, this one did pretty poor, but that was on an auction. Um, yeah, I mean, these things are definitely selling. This is a brand to be on the lookout for. Uh, here's some, I believe that's an Oxford, Oxford style. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning when it comes to like naming the styles of the shoes. But yeah, I mean, another good brand, guys. You're going to have to do some more research uh, into it. But here, look at this pair of boots, $59.99. Um, I mean, it just, you could tell. You could tell just based on the color, the design that it is of high quality. So that was definitely a cool little learning uh, right there about that brand. Let's go into the comments, guys. Shout some people out, see what's happening in the comments section. I'm gonna update 
my YouTube to see what we got going on. We got 48 people watching live. So, hey, thanks everybody for watching on a, uh, what is it, a Friday afternoon. Hustling on a Friday afternoon. I could definitely give you guys uh, a high five right there. It's a virtual high five to you guys for you know, learning and educating yourself. But uh, yeah, we got 48, 49, 47. Numbers keep changing. People watching live right now. So if you are enjoying this content, I do want to ask you guys to hit that little like button on the video. Hit the like button. We're at 18 likes, but we got 47 people watching live. I'm no mathematician, but something isn't adding up. So hit that like button. Show some love. I'm going to shout you guys out right now. If you want to be shouted out, get into the comment section right now, and I'm going to read a few comments. Robert Paneras says, Rakit is making stacks left and right. I don't know about that, Robert, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. Good old goods. Laugh out loud. Snoop Dogg likes those shoes, man. Snoop Dogg's, I guarantee you that Snoop Dogg has purchased at least one pair of shoes on eBay. Hit the like button if you think that Snoop Dogg has purchased a pair of shoes on eBay. I think he has. I do. We got Gersten Estrada in the house. What's up, Gersten? Got my main man from Miami in the house. Gersten, good to see you. Um, let's see. Tiki make stuff. What's going on, man? People use seller notes as descriptions nowadays. I've noticed that. I, I've noticed a few listings while we've been doing this. Uh, I guess that is the place to put it. I always put something in there because people always see it. So don't be f afraid to put some uh, description into that little seller note area for sure. Uh, Ed Sandoval, what's going on? Ed asks, when selling, what is better? BIN, which stands for buy it now with best offer or auction. Well, I guess this is going to be up to you uh, in your business model and the time that you have to put in. Personally, I I like to do buy it now uh, with the best offer or just buy it now by itself. Uh, the reason is I like to put in my initial research like up front in terms of what the item's selling for. So, you know, say I was going to sell a pair of that, those uh, John Fluovog, whatever, however you pronounce them, shoes or boots, uh, I would research to see you know, how much it's been selling for. And I try to find at least four or five sales and, and I price it competitively with that. And then I would just wait it out. And, uh, I enjoy doing the buy it now because you just set it and you forget it. Right. Whereas with an auction, you know, sometimes you have to, I don't know, keep reposting every five or seven days. And, you know, sometimes people don't bid on it. Like if you're selling an item that's not super popular, like for example, like if you sell like a Mario game, like you're guaranteed to get bids on your item and it's probably going to get bid up to the price that it would sell for buy it now. So that's a good example of something, you know, if you wanted to possibly get a little more, that might work in your favor because there's so much like, just like there's so much buzz around that item. But whereas like with an item like this, that's in front of you, I don't know how, how popular it is. And you know, what if only one person bids and you started off at half of what you wanted? Um, I don't know. I, I just prefer buy it now with the best offer and uh, the best offer feature will allow you to even price it higher. Um, and sometimes you get lucky, you get the higher price and other times you just get an offer and you accept it. But uh, it's really up to you. I know people who succeed with auctions and people who succeed with buy it now. So I guess my number one advice would be just experiment, man. Um, Ed, try buy it now for a month, try auctions for a month, try mixing and matching for a month, which means doing a few auctions, a few buy it nows and just see what works for you because one thing I've learned over the years, guys, in terms of people who succeed on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Craigslist, any online business really or offline business is everyone has a different model. Everyone has a different strategy and the people who succeed, they just make it work. So make it work. See what works for you. Brian Huntsman says, easy to get engaged in shoes. It is. It's very easy. Uh, Robert Panera's try looking up the brands and Zappos or 6 p.m. to see retail price variations. Awesome tip right there, Robert. Definitely a great way to uh, get a feel for what things are selling for. I do that all the time too when I'm at like Best Buy because I'm really big into buying cameras from pawn shops. So what I'll do is I'll go to Best Buy and I'll see what's on their uh, shelves and what they're selling for new. And uh, you know, typically stores like that, like Best Buy, are usually only going to keep brands that are popular in stock because they have such limited uh, shelf space. So that's just another great way. And like Robert said, go to these, you know, these big online retailers and, and research. Ed says, bought some Chuck Taylors at Big Five, fifteen bucks, uh, sold forty-five each. Shoes can make you money. That's awesome. King James is thanking me. Thank you, Kim ja uh, King James. I almost called you Kim James. Um. Ed says most Jordans on eBay are fake. How about Kohan? Yes, Kohan's definitely an awesome brand. 
We've got a lot of comments coming in. Uh, let's get back to the let's get back to the show and uh, continue to do some research. Fifty six people watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here we've got some Asics that sold for sixty nine ninety nine. That's another uh, really good athletic brand to be on the lookout for. Let's try to find something that I've never heard of before or maybe something a little interesting. I don't want to get into the Nike Air Jordans and stuff because there's so many factors that play a role in these things, collectibles and age and condition. I don't know much about it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay away from it. Here we got something. Bally Dante Cap to Toe Lace-Up Oxfords. So we got a pair of uh, Oxfords. I believe the brand is Bally. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Let's open this up and check it out. Take a look at the pictures of these guys. Very nice pictures. Uh, a little, I was going to say a little overexposed, but it still looks nice. Uh, $119 this sold for from Sama, Samamish, Washington. Big shout out to everybody in Washington. Sold for $119.20. These are used. The brand is Bally 8.5D. Let's check out what's going on here. Look at this store. This this guy or gal did a great job with his store. Uh, what is this? J Jidget? I don't know what the heck that says. Sidget Love Fashion. Unique upscale and luxury items at a fraction of the retail price. So look, this, this guy or gal has a few different measurements in their description. They've got the insole measurement, the heel height, and the actual size, which I like right there. Uh, I found that when selling shoes, when selling clothing, anything that you know, would, would affect somebody in terms of size, it's very important to include the measurements to reduce the uh, probability of a return. I mean, returns are going to happen, as you guys know. It doesn't matter if you're selling on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist. Well, not Craigslist, but uh, Etsy. Um, you know, you're going to get returns. I've never had a return on Craigslist. Hopefully, I never do. I don't know how that would play out. Um, but returns are going to happen. You want to minimize returns. And one of the best ways to minimize returns, especially with shoes and clothing, Take a lot of pictures, make a great description, you know, include a lot of details, measurements, um, you know, and it's going to help out a lot right there. So that brand is called Bally, and I'm going to do a little more research on this brand. Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm copying it. Copying it. I'm going to do it twice. Okay, Bally Men's Shoes. So let's go under pre-owned. Let's go under sold. Let's see what other models are doing within this brand. So uh, here's another pair right here. Dress Oxford. It's got the little belt in front. Sold for $49. Check this out. Wow. This is a pair of, it looks like tennis shoes. $175 or a best offer taken. So I don't know what that sold for, but I'm guessing over $100, bucks, which is really cool. Uh, there's that pair we were looking at. Forty, eighty with a best offer. This one only went for $19. I'm not sure why. You know, People always say, I had a buddy actually, he called me up the other day and said, Steve, I'm looking at this specific item. I believe it was a printer. And he goes, I don't know if I should buy it. I think they wanted 50 bucks and he was looking on the sold listings. And some of them, like a bunch of them were selling for 150, but then also a bunch were selling for like 30 or 40. And it's, it's tough to price when you see a bunch of items selling well, but then also you see a bunch that are the same exact thing, not selling for much. Um, typically I found that the ones that don't sell as much are auctions, but even if it's buy it now, it, it just, it takes the confidence away. And for me, when I see a, a fluctuation in price, you know, for, for, for a brand or a specific model, it makes me a little nervous and I want to make sure to have that much more of a margin built in. Um, black Bally is 10 and a half. You know, maybe it's just a specific model. Let's see how, how's the condition. Uh, it definitely looks like it's got some wear to it for sure. Let's see how the bottoms are looking. Yeah, you could tell these things are, you could tell these things are definitely worn pretty well. Made in Italy. Holy crap. Now, there we go. Hold on. Well, that's why it only sold for 19 bucks. This thing is all freaking destroyed. That thing is beat up. So uh, condition definitely plays a role in the selling price. So uh, yeah, make sure to check the condition out. 19 bucks plus seven. So it came in at about 26.35. Uh, let's get out of that. Let's get out of that. Let's go back and look for some more shoes. It's a lot of Nike items selling. Here's a pair that uh, I've actually sold something similar to this before. Uh, this brand, it's called MBT. 
I'm not sure what it stands for, but I remember probably, I don't know, two or three years ago, I was at a garage sale and there was a pair of brand new MBT shoes in the box. Actually, I believe there were two pairs and I want to say I popped on them each for $10 and uh, sold them on eBay fairly quick for, I think it was well over 50. It was 50 to 80 bucks. I don't remember 100% sure, but that's how I was introduced to this brand and I do have experience selling this brand. Uh, it looks like this is a pair of... Uh, Mahuta, if that's pronounced correctly, size 13 to 13 and a half. Uh, it says Barefoot Tech. So I'm not sure what is going on here, but uh, check out this brand, guys. This brand could definitely bring you in some money. Okay, so this is actually Echo. I thought the brand was MBT. What are, am I getting confused with something? Or is MBT just the style? Because you see Echo here. This is going to be a good learning experience for both of us. You see the brand Echo, and then you see MBT. So maybe MBT is produced by Echo. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe some of you guys could educate me. Let's go into the comment section and see what others are saying about that. Um, Susanna Hutchinson. What's up, Susanna? How you been? Measuring the length on the bottom and the width. At the widest part is a good thing to do and also reduces returns. So far, I've noted I've not had a, a shoe returned. Great tip right there. Robert Benares is asking, would you reconsider resoling a shoe for a better return? Um, as you guys know, I'm good friends with Robert Burns, who is a big shoe seller. You might have seen his interview on the Green Room and on the Rake and Profit YouTube channel. But he actually mentioned that he would resole uh, some of the higher end brands like Allen Edmonds and whatnot. And I forget what he said it would cost. Uh, but think of it this way, guys. Some of these Allen Edmonds shoes used will go for 150, 200 bucks. So I mean, say you pick up one that is just like destroyed on, on on the bottoms for you know six or seven bucks. Even if it costs you 40 or 50 dollars to resole it, um, you're in it for 60 bucks. You sell it for 150, 200 dollars used, and and you may be thinking, Steve, you're crazy, man. Shoes don't go for that much. Look them up. We'll do some research on Allen Edmonds in a second. Uh, but some of these brands go for big bucks. So uh, I think you know it might be a possibility, but Robert, you're going to have to consider the time it's going to take, right? As you know, Robert, you're a you're a freaking you're you're pretty much a master at Amazon FBA. I would say you you're putting up some great numbers and whatnot. You know the value of time and what time is worth to you. So uh, it's just a matter of is it worth it to you know bring it down to the shoe shop and you know get the get the things resold and bring them back and list them up. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Brooke Hayes is saying, I sold MBTs for 80 bucks. MBT is the brand. Uh, it's an ortho therapeutic thing. Got them for five bucks at Goodwill. Sold for 80 bucks, baby. I'm all about that MBT life now. So uh, as you can see, we've got people in the comments. Big shout out to Brooke Hayes who are actually selling these items. So uh, yeah, there is definitely money to be made. Let's see. I'm going to refresh the comment section to see what's going on. Appreciate all the likes, everybody. 30 likes. Only one dislike. I'm going to have a sip of my pineapple juice. Mmm. Got to love the pineapple juice. Um, let's see. What else do we have going on here? So that was the MBT. Let's go into um, Allen Edmonds, guys. This is a brand that when dealing with used men's shoes could make you a lot of money. Now, I do want to say what these items will sell for can vary greatly based on the particular model, the condition, uh, the size, the color, right, the style. So you do want to take into consideration that. But uh, let's go into this brand right here, Allen Edmonds, and let's go for pre-owned so we don't waste our time going through everything. Let's go buy it now. Let's go sold and let's go US only so we know that all the prices are accurate. Okay, here we go. And you're going to see a wide array, uh, array of prices. Watch. Uh, here's here's one that sold for 25 These are just some basic uh, leather penny loafers. And I've noticed a lot of the Allen Edmonds penny loafers don't go for as much. Uh, I'm sure there are specific models and colors and sizes that do better than others. Um, but I've just noticed that those aren't the big money makers. I found that the best ones are usually like the Oxford style shoes. The real dressy ones, the ones with the buckles. Uh, here's one. Check this out right here. Allen Edmonds, quote unquote, Mora 2.0, whatever that means. Double 
monk strap loafers. Check this puppy out. I don't know who let the dogs out, but this dog escaped and made a lot of money. What does that mean? I have no clue. But 179 buckaroos in the house. I mean, check this thing out. That's nice. That's really, really nice. It's unique. It's weird. If I was at a if I was at a thrift store and I was going down the clothing uh, the, the shoe rack and I saw that immediately, immediately, and there'd be no hesitation. There would be no hesitation at all. I would pick that shoe up because it looks interesting. Anything with a buckle gets me excited. A buckle on a shoe. I actually picked up a pair of uh, churches. I can't even talk. Churches, churches shoes. Say that twenty times. Churches, church. Okay, I can't even do it twice. Uh, picked up a pair of churches shoes with the buckle, and that thing's a money maker. I still have to get it listed, but uh, check this thing out right here. Very, very nice. Hundred seventy nine bucks from Huntersville, North Carolina. Steve's name brand shoes. You guys, I might just have another shoe store that you don't know of. This might be my store. Who knows? Maybe I'm showing you my own item that I sold. The Bondo one. No, I'd never name myself that. Okay, let's keep moving along. All right. So as you can see, Allen Edmonds are going all over the place. Uh, what else? Oh, here's another pair of Allen Edmonds. 95, best offer. Another buckle, 175. What the heck is this? Gucci men's monogram silver shoes. Pfft. Again, I get nervous with brands like this just because I can I can never tell if they're real or fake. Uh, but check this thing out. If Man, if aliens took over the planet, they'd probably be wearing something like this if they wore shoes. So, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of different opinions going on right now if if aliens exist or if there's you know life outside of Earth or extraterrestrials. All I can say is, if you see somebody wearing a pair of these, there's a good chance they're an alien. That's all I'm trying to say. So, if we got any aliens watching live right now, hit the like button. But uh. That's a crazy pair of shoes. All right, um, let's get out of that alien shoe. Here, someone was asking about Kohan earlier. Here's a pair of Kohan, uh, kind of like shoe boots. What are these things called? Uh, I'm just reading the title right now. I don't know. Uh, maybe some of you guys can tell me what the style of this is called. Uh, ankle boots, I guess, I see. But this is a pair of, I guess, ankle boots. $79.99 leather, suede leather. Really nice, and uh, I mean, check that out. That's a freaking nice uh, shoe right there. Very, very nice. Seventy nine ninety nine. I mean, even if you paid fifteen or twenty bucks, you know, say you paid twenty bucks for this out the door, and you charge shipping on your listing. You spent you know ten fifteen minutes taking pictures, getting it listed up. If you if you paid twenty bucks for this and sold it for eighty, you're down from eighty minus your cost is twenty. So now you're down to sixty bucks profit, and then. I just estimate 12% of 80 is about, I don't know, we'll just say 10 bucks. So now you're down to 80, 60, 50. I mean, you're making $50 profit. Uh, isn't that right? 50? Yeah, $50 profit if you sell a Kohan boot like this, ankle boot, for 80 bucks plus shipping and you pay 20. So, you know, a lot of people complain, you know, Steve, man, the thrift stores are too expensive. They want 15, they want 20, they want $30 for a pair of shoes or ankle boots. There's still money to be made in these items. There really is money to be made, and I'm breaking it down for you firsthand right now. I mean, look at this guy, Selling Our Souls. That's a freaking awesome name right there. 3,471 feedback. Let's, You know what? Let's do a little spying action right now on this guy because I like him. I like him. I like his name. I like his pictures. I like what he's selling. Let's, let's do a little spy action right now. Selling Our Souls, 3,471 feedback. Last 12 months, 99.8% feedback. I like it. I like it. Let's dive into his store and see what this guy is up to. Um, it looks like he has got 1,283 items for sale. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Let's check out his pictures. Oh, man, he's got a pair of Cole Hans for $7, man. Oh, hate to see it because I know he's not going to make any money. Uh, let's go to sold listings and see what this guy's been selling. I like him. I like this guy. A pair of Dunham New Balance black leather shoes, 38 bucks. There's those Cole Hans Ultra Torin Zero Drop Black Scuba. I don't know what this is, but he's got a lot of keywords going on. What in the world is this? Holy mackerel. Okay, guys, let me rephrase my, my previous statement. If if somebody was, if, if someone's wearing a pair of those silver Gucci shoes or this, you're an alien. I guarantee you're an alien. What the heck is this? 
Wow. I want to know in the comment section below, what's the most money you would pay for a pair of a, a pair of these shoes? Say you were at a thrift store. Let's say you guys were at a thrift store. You didn't have your phone on you or maybe the internet wasn't working and you saw this exact pair of shoes in a, in a Goodwill. What's the most you would pay? What is the most you would pay for a pair of these shoes? Would you buy it? This is freaking interesting. Let's go to the comment section and see what people have to say about that. And I'm going to update the comment section real quick. Holy aluminum foil. Uh, best way to protect yourself from an alien attack is to bring a camera with you. Exactly. Um, Brooke Hayes is saying, I put my shoes in a flat rate bubble mailer. Honestly, never had a complaint. Of course, if it's small enough, uh, get into the men's shoes I ship in the priority shoe box. Okay, so if they're small enough, you could ship them in the priority shoe box. Um, let's see. Body Comp is saying, I just saw completed listings for iPhone 6. Most are around 800. Um, Brooke Hayes says, it must have been like 24 karat gold iPhone, right? Okay, so they're talking about iPhones. I'm sorry, I thought they were talking about shoes. Um, Robert Bernera's is saying that those shoes are very popular limited edition shoes. Body Comp is saying he would have paid up to 30 bucks. So yeah, definitely an interesting shoe right there to uh, buy and sell. And uh, as you guys can already see, there are so many different pairs of shoes. I mean, look at this seller selling your soul. Uh, the the eBay seller, <coughs> excuse me, the eBay seller. I mean, look at the shoes they're selling. I mean, this is all in one day. Wow, that's a cool belt. This is all in one day. Now we're on you know yesterday's date. Uh, but check it out. Check out these shoes. Look at it. Look at it. Respect it. I don't know if you guys follow the Hodge twins on uh, YouTube, but those guys are crazy. They're always, they're always like, they'll always say something like, you see that? You see that? Look at those. You see it? You got it? Look, respect it. So uh, I'm infringing on their trademark. But anyways, yeah, there's a lot of shoes, guys. There's definitely a lot of shoes to sell out there. And hopefully you guys are starting to see the opportunities with uh, men's shoes. I mean, look at all the different brands. I mean, from Nike to Red Wing, which Red Wing, guys, if you don't know about Red Wing, wow, take a look at Red Wing, guys. I mean, this, this brand will bring you in really, really big money. And I believe my main man, Eric, over with the College Picker YouTube channel, who is one of the uh, admins of the Green Room, I believe recently he said he picked up, and don't quote me 100%, uh, maybe some of you folks could help me that are watching from the Green Room, but he, I believe he said he picked up six or seven or eight uh, Red Wing, I don't know what, what type of item it was, but I know it was a Red Wing shoe, seven or eight of them, and I think he's already sold half of them or maybe even more. But uh, Red Wing could definitely bring you in some big money. I mean, look at this, one seventy nine ninety nine. I mean, even at a high end thrift store, right in a high end town, say they were selling this for sixty bucks, there's still a lot of money to be made at sixty dollars for an item like this. I mean, let's say you pay sixty, you get shipping covered, you sell it for hundred eighty. You know, you're gonna pay about twenty bucks in fees. I mean, you're still you're still looking at making 60 70 bucks profit doubling up your money so uh, you know check this out I mean that's just a beautiful uh, item right there for sure let's go through a few more items guys um, here's a Kenneth Cole uh, item that sold and again I don't usually mess with Kenneth Cole but it's just a fine example of you know like I always say with clothing items, even lower end clothing items like Gap, American Eagle, our Aeropostale, um, there's a lot of them could bring in good money if you find the specific item that people want. There's always a specific item in every brand that people want. Like for Gap, the leather jackets do well. Uh, American Eagle, there's specific jeans that do well. Um, Aeropostale, you know, there's certain vests that do really well. So, um, I mean, check it out. $69.99 Kenneth Cole shoe. I mean, you could probably pick that up for 10 bucks all day long. How many sell per month? I don't know. That's something you're going to want to do research on, but, uh, just a fine example right there. Here's another pair of Allen Edmonds. Really cool. Uh, a pair to be Oxford shoes, 99 bucks. I mean, check this out, guys. I mean, I don't know much about Nike. I know a lot of Nike shoes do really well, but check this out. 149 buckaroos on this thing. What the heck? Why? I don't know. I have no clue. I mean, it looks it looks like it smells. I'm just being 100% honest with you. It looks like it smells. But um, I don't know if it's it's got to be vintage or rare of some sort. 
in good condition. You're going to love it, I guarantee. Note that there was a tiny hole in the left shoe. So it sold for 149 or there was a best offer accepted on it. And there's a hole in the shoe. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, man. Some of the stuff that sells on eBay is just, it's just mind blowing. You, you'll, you'll really be surprised as time goes on. Some of the stuff that you sell, if you look back in your sold listings and you're like, wow, how did that sell for that much? But that is about it, guys. I think I'm going to wrap things up. I just want to go a little bit behind the scenes and share with you guys some of the best brands and items that are selling on eBay. If you guys want to learn, you know, firsthand and educate yourself and, and really put yourself in a position to succeed, do what I'm doing right now, guys. Get into the sold listings, right? Find a specific item. I like to focus on one item at a time. So for example, I'm focusing on men's used shoes that are selling for $60 or more. Buy it now on eBay within the United States. I like to focus on one model um, or excuse me, one type of product, really narrow it down and just dive into it. And uh, what I probably would be doing right now if I wasn't live is making a list and uh, have a little notepad open or a Google Doc and start making a list within those products and start to study them you know, from time to time. And the key really isn't to memorize everything. The key is to really just train yourself to recognize if that makes any sense. You know, you don't have to know that every, you don't have to remember every single brand like off the tippity top of your head. Like if I was to say, name your 20 top brands, like you don't have to do that. You just need to see it and recognize it and know that it brings in money. So when you're out in the field, you can really speed up your process of sourcing because you're going to recognize it and you're not going to have to spend like countless, you know, 20, 30 minutes in a thrift store trying to figure out what is what you'll know. You know what? I've done research on this before. I know these sell between here and here. Uh, I'm going to take a risk. So it's all about time. Uh, time is money. That's the name of the game. And uh, hopefully this video helped. So I'm going to jump into the comments real quick for the last five minutes or so. Answer any questions. If you guys want to ask questions about uh, shoes, that's great. If you guys also want to go off topic, ask me questions about FBA, making money with YouTube, email marketing, um, Craigslist, bicycles, Kindle, ask away. I'm, I'm going to hang out with you guys for a little bit and uh, answer some questions because that's really why I'm doing these live shows. I mean, I could easily, you know, shoot a live, excuse me, shoot a, a research, you know, uh, selling on eBay shoes video behind the scenes and then upload it and have a nice introduction and, you know, outro video, but I want to do it live because I want to be able to interact with you guys. I, I, I find it a, very fun and entertaining and I, I love helping people out and helps me out. It helps you out and it's just a good time. Uh, Rakin, you definitely motivate. How can we motivate you? You guys are motivating. You're motivating me by being in the comments and interacting and having fun. So that's motivating me right there. Um, Brooke Hay says, I love shoes, men's, women's, anything. I'm about it. When I see it, I scoop them up all the time. It's something new for me within the last, uh, three months. That's a good point right there. I also love shoes guys because the price per sale is, is typically high. Uh, I mean, I, I recently, you might've seen, I had a pair of Alden or Alden. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to say Alden shoes, A L D E N that I picked up for $10 at Goodwill. Sold them for $220, guys. I mean, I love the price of these shoes. If you pick the right ones, you could sell them for 50 bucks plus all day long, but you're going to have to be a little picky. Let's see. Um, how many did he sell in one day uh, regarding that seller we were looking at? I, it was looking like it was 10 to 15 a day. Um, let's see. I'm just looking through some of the comments right now to see what's going on. Hey, what's up, Tyler Davenport? Brookhays is saying, ooh, that had a big flat foot in it. Yeah, it's crazy. London Coal Collection, what is going on, girl? Says, so glad to see you make these videos again. I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun, so I appreciate you watching for sure. Someone's asking if an item is over 16 ounces but under 2 pounds, how do you mail? I noticed first class mail only goes to 16 ounces and flat rate is $12. Uh, Ed, that's, it's, it's really going to depend based on the location. Um, so if it is something somewhat close to you or not too far, you might want to look at shipping it um, in different boxes, depending on the size, of course. I mean, they have zone A boxes, the zone B boxes. Um, you have priority, you have economy, uh, you could go UPS or U 
USPS, um, it's really going to differ. My, my best advice for you is when you're, when you're uh, printing out your label, and you go to weigh it, you can check all the different options to see which one's the cheapest. Um, just do take into consideration, you know, certain ones you're not going to be able to do. Like you, you can't put a pair of shoes in a, in a small flat rate box. It's just not going to fit. So, uh, you know, certain, uh, you know, certain shipping methods are going to require um, that an item be a certain size or whatnot, but just experiment. You'll get the hang of it for sure. Uh, but typically I'm probably looking, if I'm selling, if I'm going to be sending out a pair of uh, shoes, probably looking at either a worst case scenario, medium or large flat rate box priority, or I'll probably just put it in a, um, in, in a, uh, like a plain cardboard box and send it out priority or, um, one of the zone boxes. It's been a while, guys. I haven't shipped anything with a zone box in probably over a year, so I don't even remember how big they are. It's been such a long time. As you guys know, I'm like 90, 90% into Amazon and 10% eBay, so um, it is what it is. Let's keep going down. JJ Man, 1982. What's going on, JJ Man? I'm, I'm no mathematician, but if you were born in 1982, you are approximately 33 years old, so... I don't know why I had to explain that, but good to have you here. How much do you typically spend on a Goodwill trip? Really depends. It really depends. Um, you know, it depends what is what is in the store and what I could buy. I mean, I have no limit right now. You know, you guys are going to get to a point, and maybe you already are there, where you've got money saved up, and you've got credit cards, and you've got credit, and uh, you know, your bills are paid and, and you pretty much spend what you can buy. I'm, I'm at that point, you know, not to brag, but I've, I've worked very hard over the years to save money and put money aside. So, you know, so I could have money to, to spend on, on inventory. So, you know, you know, sometimes I'll buy 20 or 30 books and spend, you know, 30, 40 bucks, or sometimes I'll only buy a board game, you know, for four bucks. Other times I'll spend, you know, two or $300. It really depends. Uh, it just, just depends on what, what's there and, and what's available and whatnot. Uh, last night I went out doing some late night retail arbitrage with my good buddy, uh, Tim. So big shout out to you, Tim. We went out to, uh, I think three Walmarts, a Walgreens. We didn't find anything at Walgreens. Um, I forgot. We went to at least three Walmarts, and I spent in total. I think I spent, I don't know, a little less than two hundred dollars. So uh, it really does depend on where you go. Uh, let me keep updating these comments real quick and answering it. Hey, if you guys liked this video, hit the like button, show some love. I really do appreciate it. Hitting that like button makes me feel good. Let's me know that you know I'm adding value to your life and motivates me. Someone asked before, how can we motivate you, Steve? Hit the like button. That'll motivate me. That'll motivate me to keep putting out these uh, free informative videos for sure. Uh, question, Rakin, how do you sell 10 items a day consistently? Well, I don't sell 10 items a day on eBay because I have like very little items in my eBay store now. As you guys know, I used to have over a thousand items in my store and I, I – went over to Amazon FBA. So right now I think I have, I think I've got like 30 items or so in my store, maybe even 10 now. Cause I have to relist about 20 that didn't sell. Um, but I, I don't put a ton of focus in eBay, but it's something that, you know, I, I would like to do a thousand to 2000 a month on eBay right now. Um, and with Amazon FBA, my goal is to stay around, you know, I'd like to stay around 10,000 a month. I'm not there yet. I've been kind of dwindling, uh, not dwindling. What's the word? Uh, uh, averaging anywhere between five to seven a month. I, hopefully this month on Amazon FBA, I'm on pace to do eight or nine. Um, but I would like to get around 10 K a month on Amazon. That's my goal and stay between a thousand or 2000 on eBay. You're probably wondering why Steve, why, why so, why do you only want to do that little on eBay? The thing is guys, I have so many things that are going on between my different businesses. Time is limited and eBay is a, is a big time suck. And if I wanted to eliminate that time suck with eBay, I'd have to hire people. And I just, I really don't want to go down that route. Um, I do like eBay for a few different reasons. I enjoy selling on eBay because it's, it's intimate. It's more intimate. And what do I mean by that? Well, and you know, you take the pictures, you create your own listings, you ship it out to the person. I don't know. It's just fun. It's fun. Um, another reason I like selling on eBay is because there's a lot of items that you can't sell on Amazon, like used shoes. I mean, you can't put it on Amazon or, you know, uh, some type of antique or a coin or something. Oh, there's a million different things out there, but there's a lot of items that you could only sell on eBay um, that Amazon just won't allow, or you're probably going to get a return on Amazon. So uh, it opens up the doors for more opportunities, right? I mean, 
there's there's been a lot of times where when I wasn't selling on eBay about six months ago, I, were, I was passing up Allen Edmonds and profitable items because I'm like, I'm not selling on eBay. Um, so it definitely opens up the doors to more profit. Another reason why I like selling on eBay is cash flow. You're probably wondering, what do you mean cash flow? Well, right now, depending on when you signed up for Amazon, typically if you've been selling on Amazon or you just started within the last couple of years, you get paid out every two weeks on Amazon. So what does that mean? That means that you have to have enough money to continue buying and feeding the beast uh, while you wait for your payment on Amazon. Well, with eBay, you get paid instantly through PayPal, and all you have to do is sh send over the money from PayPal to your bank account, and there you go. You know your cash flow issue solved. So it's good for cash flow. It's good for that immediate money, and it's it's just a good time. Uh, body comp, I got, I get it now, Steve. Going to finally move to Amazon. Amazon's the place to be, guys. I love selling on Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. Brooke Hayes, I sold Dr. Uh, Dr. Scholl's shoes last night for 41 bucks and paid two. It's not a bad profit margin. Let's guess. You paid two. I don't know if it was free shipping or not, but let's just say even you paid 10 to ship. You're down to 31. Now you're down to 29 after the $2 you invested. And then fees, maybe you're down to another five. So, I mean, you're still making 20 bucks profit on that. So, you know, can't beat that. I've sold JJ Man 1982. I've sold a couple things on eBay, but don't really have the cash to sell a lot. But I love to be able to make fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars out of it. Um, you know, I was just talking gross sales. I wasn't talking profit. I mean, if I could make a thousand dollars profit per month on eBay, I'd be cool with that. Just because it's just extra money for me and just helps with the cash flow and it's just fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can get to the fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars per month profit mark on eBay. The thing is, the one strong correlation I found from, you know, increasing profits and making a good amount of money on eBay is having enough inventory. So you have to you have to list a consistent amount. You have to build up your inventory. And if you want to make two thousand dollars profit per month selling shoes and clothing and stuff, I'd say you're probably going to. And maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But this is just my opinion. If you're buying good brands and your average price for sales, you know, above 30 and you're selling shoes and clothing, I'm going to say you have to be at least at three to 500 items in your inventory to get to that mark of $2,000 profit every month. I'd be curious to know what you think. If you guys are selling items for at least $30 per item on eBay, how much inventory do you feel like you'd have to have in your in your inventory, how many products in your inventory to, to make two thousand dollars profit per month? I'm guessing three to five hundred, um, but I'd be curious to know what you guys think. Um, Body Comp says been on eBay for one and a half years, have tried very hard, and have net, not met my goals. So I mean, there's so many factors that are going to play in your success. You know, it's the products, it's your process, it's the speed, it's your shipping abilities, it's where you're going to source. I mean, there's so many different factors, guys. But there's people making it work. I mean, I don't know if you guys follow Ronnie Hart on YouTube, but I mean, the guy's been putting up some serious number numbers, eight to twelve grand per month on eBay selling clothing and shoes and a few other random items. So there's people out there doing it. You just need to figure out a strategy that works for you. So I think that is about it, guys. I'm going to close up this live show. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I do have a free guide in the description called 100 Amazing Items to Resell that I've created alongside with The Green Room, which is a membership community that I run alongside with the Bonafide Hustler, College Picker, and Retro Aficionado. So if you guys want another free resource, Go into the description and it's the first line free book, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. That'll give you 100 items that you can sell from thrift stores, garage sales, uh, that you can sell on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Craigslist, and uh, it'll show you a picture, the brand, what to buy and sell, how much it sells for, and a lot of cool stuff. So be sure to get that as well. Also, if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be updated anytime I put out new content. And uh, I make a lot of content about eBay, Amazon, making money online, uh, YouTube. So uh, definitely be sure to subscribe. But yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. Hopefully it helped and got you moving in the right direction with selling used shoes on eBay. If you guys end up finding any of these brands that I mentioned in this video and selling it for some good profit, be sure to connect with me over on Periscope at Rake and Profit or Facebook. Send me a picture of that sale. I want to know that you're making it work. Uh, but yeah, until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Keep on picking and making our money, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.